Folks, be sure to stay tuned to my friend Irma today until the end of the program, when your friend Irma will have a surprising offer to make. Yep, there she stands. Irma Peterson, my wonderful roommate. And a girl who I am proud to say is so stupid she thinks flypaper is the stationery they use in airplanes. <laughs> That's nothing. Yesterday she took a package of ends and tied them all together. So I said, Irma, what's the idea? And she said, Well, a good housekeeper never leaves any loose ends lying around. <laughs> But housekeepers, stenographers, businessmen, everybody knows that E-N-N-D-S, the really effective chlorophyll tablets, are wonderful to carry around because they stop triple O. Stop odors of body, odors of breath, odor of fence. It's amazing, but one or two tiny ends tablets daily stop all three forms of odor of fence. Keep you fresh as a daisy all over, all day. And now ends America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, are proud to present your favorite comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. Irma, when you finish that magazine, can I have it? All right, Jane, I'm just reading the news. Oh, how do you like this? What? It says, President Truman to clean house. I guess the maid must have quit. <laughs> well, maybe she's sore because she's the only one in Washington who didn't get a mink coat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and listen to this. Winston Churchill has sold his memoirs to Life magazine for a quarter of a million dollars. What about it? I wonder what I could get for mine. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Ten, twenty years. <laughs> no, Jane, seriously. I I've been keeping a diary, and I think it's so good it can be published. Oh, you're kidding. No, it's all about my life from the time I left the farm in Minnesota till the time I came to New York. I got a great title for you. Was this trip necessary? <laughs> you, but I can figure out my own title. Now, let's see. Um, Churchill had some very tough jobs to handle. That's why he's called his life Trial by Fire. Well, I've seen the way you handle jobs, Cookie. Why don't you call yourself fired after every trial? <laughs> Look, Irma, don't go off on another kick, yeah, will but, you? But Churchill got all that money. Honey, Churchill is a leader, a diplomat, a military man. Why, just his record with the Navy. Believe me. Jane, he hasn't fought off any more sailors than I have. <laughs> but why don't you read my memoirs before you pass judgment? Well, here, it's right here on the table. Must I? Please. Okay, honey, I'll try. Let's see. The Life of Irma Peterson. Chapter One. I am born. <laughs> I was born on a farm in Minnesota in 1929. Wasn't that the year the whole country went to pot? <laughs> oh, please, Jane, no comments. Read on. Okay, honey. My father and mother were very poor. All they had was a cow named Alice, one donkey and six pigs, and I was a welcome addition to the family. Oh. <laughs> Good, isn't it, Jane? Uh, do you think I can get life to buy this? Yeah, I think there's a chance you could get life for this. <laughs> what you mean, Jane. Don't think it's very nice of you to discourage me. Will you get one thing in your head, Irma? Everybody writes memoirs, but Churchill's was bought because it was dramatic. It was full of action, and he faced one crisis after another. My life has been full of crises. Look at this right here on page eight. I was going to school, and they sent for my father. It was a little red school. <laughs> Come in. I'm Mr. Peterson. 
Oh, Irma's father. I'm glad you came. Uh, Mr. Peterson, something must be done about this girl. As you know, we took her IQ. Yes, I understand she owes the school five points. <laughs> she was showing some improvement, but now she's reached the age where she can't concentrate. All she thinks about is boys. Boys? That's the only thing on her mind. Men. I'll show you. Uh, Irma, will you please turn around? Oh, hello, Daddy. What is it, teacher? What is the largest river in the United States? Mr. Sippy. <laughs> and uh, what's the capital of the United States? Boys Town. <laughs> you see, we have arrived at a crisis in this girl's life. Either she gets better marks or I suggest you marry her off. Which shall it be, daughter? Oh, Daddy, of course I want to stay in school. All girls go through this stage. But I'm fighting it off. I'm not going to think of men or, or boys anymore. I'm through with them. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, daughter, because who knows? If you get good marks in school, they're liable to give you a fellowship. Oh, that's wonderful. What does he look like? <laughs> At the age of 16, I left for New York. By mistake, I got on a cattle train. It was a terrible trip. The food was dreadful. I'll get it gladly. Wow. Hi, Miss O'Reilly. You're in Grand Voice tonight. What's the name of that song? It's called It's a Sin. Hmm. But the professor says the way I sing it, it's not a sin. It's more of a crime. <laughs> I hope I'm not interrupting anything. But nothing. Irma is reading her memoirs. Well, what do you know? I guess all we girls are the same. You know, I keep a diary. <laughs> Don't tell me you're thinking about having it published. Why not? It could sort of be the woman's answer to the Kinsey report. <laughs> you know, I go all the way back to the Spanish-American War. That far? Yes, and you should see how the servicemen used to hang around me house. If it wasn't for me, goodness knows how many men would have gone down with the main. <laughs> Oh, don't bother telling Jane about it. To her, you're nobody unless you're Winston Churchill. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you see, Miss O'Reilly. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kilpatsky. <laughs> Hello, girls. I'm Mrs. O'Reilly. Tonight, I got no insults for you. Well, thank you. I just got one simple request. Please stop singing outside of my room. You wake up the termites, it reminds them that I still got some furniture left. <laughs> Irma, you've got a book in your hand. You're going to swat flies. <laughs> no. No, Professor. Little Miss Shakespeare has written her memoirs, and because Winston Churchill had his published, she thinks she should have hers published. I don't know where you girls get these ideas. I remember the time Mrs. O'Reilly sent in her picture for the cover of a national magazine. And why not? They wanted a picture of an average girl who represented typical American womanhood. Well, there I can't argue, because I have always felt that you were the type of woman that should be covered with a hood. <laughs> Believe me, if they ever put your picture on the cover of Look, they would change the name of the magazine to Save Your Eyes. Irma, stick to your guns. I guarantee some publisher would buy my diary if he had enough asbestos to print it on. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, you keep a diary? Well, I think of it more as a score sheet. <laughs> it's a list of the men who have succumbed to me charms. Well, you know, you've got a very good chance to sell it. They're always looking for horror stories. <laughs> oh, please, we're not discussing Miss O'Reilly's diary. I want to know who will publish my memoirs. Hey, that must be the milkman at the back door. Hello, Miss Stacy. I saw your note here, but I'm sorry. I'm all out of sour cream. Oh, no sour cream? Sorry. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Milkman. 
Uh, will you come in here? Why, what is it, Miss Peterson? Well, I have a book, and I want the honest opinion of the man on the street. Here, uh, read this page and tell me what you think. Oh, Cookie, really? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Let's see. When I was a 16-year-old girl, I came to New York. My first trip was to Grant's tomb. I waited around all day, but he did not come out. <laughs> I was very disappointed as Cary Grant is my favorite actor. Well, how do you like it? Well, Miss Stacy, as I was saying, we have no sour cream. But if you just hold this book over the sweet cream I left, I'm sure you'll get the same results. Goodbye. <laughs> back, back, everybody. The tide's coming in again. Irma... Honey, please understand. It's 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 just that don't talk to me. Yeah, but I'm a darling. If you'll just listen. No, I don't want to hear a word from any of you. You're all against me. I'm going to talk to the only person who really loves me, Al. Irma. Don't try to stop me. You'll regret this day. My memoirs will be published, and who knows? It may even win the pugilist prize. <laughs> the pugilist prize? Yes. Very possible. This should knock out the publishing business in the first round. <laughs> shoo! Shoo! Get out of here! Oh, Al! Chicken! I've been looking all over for you, Al. You've given up your old park bench. Yeah, I had an argument with Bernard Baruch. <laughs> What's that you got under your arm, chicken? Sandwiches? No, that's a book. It's my huh? life story, my memoirs. Have you got me in your book? Yes. I, I want to get it published. Al, do you know a publisher? Oh, sure. Know a good one. My friend Benny. He prints them tip sheets for the racetracks. <laughs> oh, but Al, do you think he's the man to print my life story? Don't worry, chicken. He'll put a picture of you on the cover so people will know it ain't about a horse. Oh. Sure. Here's his address. Oh, gee, I'll call him up. Gee, Al, uh, I don't know how much to ask for my story. Oh, be tough, chicken. Tell him you want $5,000 if the book is a winner, and three and two for place and show. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Guard against triple O. Yes, guard against triple O. Odor of breath, odor of body, odor of fence. If you've been using old-fashioned body deodorants, mouthwashes, toothpaste, or deodorant soap to avoid offending, now here's an easier, quicker, much more effective way to keep fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. Take ends today. Chase triple O away. Yes, one or two tiny ends chlorophyll tablets protect you against all three. Odor of body, odor of breath, odor of fence. No muss, no fuss. Stop triple O in minutes. Prove it with a famous ends test. Rub an onion slice on your hand. Now take an ends chlorophyll tablet. Moisten and rub it on the same spot. The odor's gone. That's how ends work where odors begin inside your body to stop triple O. And remember, ends contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Don't expect such lasting protection from cheap chewing gum and candy substitutes which contain so little chlorophyll. Take ends today. Chase triple O away. Insist on ends called ends because they end your worries about triple O. That's E-N-N-D-S, ends chlorophyll tablets. Safe. Safe as any garden vegetable. Effective, pleasant tasting. Trial size ends only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes even more economical. And remember, stay tuned to my friend Irma today to hear a surprise offer for you from your friend Irma. <laughs> an appointment with a publisher. She won't tell me who he is, but in her own mind, her memoirs are as good as sold. And is she acting the part? Jane, my dear. Yes, Schnook, what is it? <laughs> what a lovely day. Isn't the weather congealing today? <laughs> congealing? What do you mean? I don't know, but I think an author should use big words. 
Oh, by all means, it's so ricochet. <laughs> Cookie, is your book going to have a dedication? Yes, Jane, I'm, I'm dedicating it to you. Oh. On the first page, it will say, To Jane Stacy, my best friend, without to whom I would be nothing. <laughs> Without to whom? That's right. You must never split in an infirmary. <laughs> Sweetie, uh, honey, I-, I want you to know that nothing you ever do will touch me as much as the fact that you want to dedicate your memoirs to me. Oh, thanks. Honestly, I love you for it. Thank you. But at the same time, Irma, I don't want to see you get hurt. And, 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 and what if... What if... If they don't publish my book? Oh, Jane, it's impossible. They must love my book. I'm going to be world famous. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I was buried in Westminster Lobby. (laughs) Well, they'll have to put up signs, watch your step. (laughs) Remember, you better get to the office. You have a boss who is an author. Mr. Clyde? Mm Mm-hmm. He writes those little pink slips that say you're fired. Go on. Hurry up. Oh, I I will. Oh, and Jane, do you think when I become a famous author, I should buy a Duesenberg? A Duesenberg? Yeah, you know, one of those big foreign dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, Miss Hemingway. Ah, welcome, Miss Peterson. And how is my favorite banister today? Banister? Yeah, that's English for lawyer. Oh, is it? Banister. (laughs) Well, I'm a little tired. A lot of kids have been sliding down me today. (laughs) What's the idea of the fancy talk? Well, I've become an author. Miss Peterson, I've told you a dozen times to be careful in the subway. You've hit your head on the turnstile again. (laughs) No, really, I've written a book. The story of my life. Mm-hmm. What are you calling it? Why was I born? <laughs> no, it hasn't got a title yet. But I have an appointment with a publisher, and I want you to draw up a contract. I wouldn't think of it. Oh, please, Mr. Clyde. It, it, it's for my future. And besides, you'll be famous. I wrote about you in my memoirs. But wait a minute. What did you write? Oh, it's very flattering. I wrote, what a big criminal lawyer you are. In fact, I laid it on. You did? Yes. In fact, I said that no lawyer in the state has a bigger criminal record. (laughs) You take me out of that book at once, do you hear? But it's already written. Take me out. Well, I will if you draw up the contract. It's blackmail. Very well. What do you want me to put in the contract? Oh, see. Well, uh, if my life is made into a movie, I want my part to be played by a suitable star. Do you wish me to specify anyone in particular? Do you have anyone in mind? Yes, Francis, the talking mule. (laughs) Oh, Mr. Clyde, now this is very serious. Do you realize how much money Winston Churchill made on his memoirs? Miss Peterson, there's a slight difference. Churchill was valued. He never stooped before a conqueror. What about me? It's the reverse. No one ever conquered your stupidity. (laughs) Now, just in case some publisher is sore enough at the world to print this monstrosity of yours, make sure you get a royalty. A royalty? Nothing doing. I'm not going to give up my citizenship for anyone. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, here he is. Turf Publishing Company. Oh, dear. Close by order the police. Yes, miss? I was in the neighborhood. I'm looking for a publisher, and I saw the sign on the door. I see. I'm Mr. Brooks. Is that the manuscript under your arm? Yes, it's my memoirs. Oh? Uh, Have you used the current technique, you know, uh, introspective? No, I've kept it clean. (laughs) Uh, It's the story of my life. Hmm. May I see it? Yes, I changed the beginning. To Jane Stacy, without to whom I would be nothing. I live in New York City with Jane and the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly, people I think the world. 
think the world. Well, I left out of because you can't end a sentence with a pronoun. So I took uh, all the words I had to leave out and put them on three separate pages in back of a book. <laughs> my, my, it's, uh, it's four o'clock. I'm late for tea. Goodbye. <laughs> My name is Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, I've just taken that for my pen name. Irma Peterson doesn't seem to get me very far. Uh, what can we do for you? Well, it says on the door, Professor Nicholas Authors Institute. I've written a book. May I see it? Here. I live in New York City, and, and the people I think the world... <clears throat> Could you leave this here, miss? We usually don't publish books, but I'm sure Professor Nichols would be interested in seeing this. Oh, thank you. A and I want to call the book Halfway to Heaven. Halfway to Heaven? What an unusual title. Where'd you get it? From my boss. He always says I'm dead from the neck up. <laughs> Irma, honey, stop that whimpering. But it's been five days, and I haven't heard from Professor Nichols. Don't take it so hard, Irma. So what if you're not a writer? What's so good about being a writer? Most of them are starving. They live in a cold, dark garret with no furniture, no plumbing, no... Say, so come to think of it, all I need is a pencil. <laughs> Irma, darling, laugh it off. Personally, I don't see why you want the whole world to know about your life. I like to keep the men guessing about me age and my beauty secrets. You know, sort of a human quiz program. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I think of you, Mrs. O'Reilly, a quiz program. Because every time I look at your red hair, your pearly teeth, and your fluttering eyelashes, I say to myself, true or false? <laughs> Look who's talking, you skinny old needle nose. <laughs> I've got a good mind to run a thread through your ears and darn me stockings. Hello? Yes, this is Irma Peterson. Who, Professor Nichols? You read my book? You're sending me a check for a hundred dollars. Oh, uh, see the ad in today's paper. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nichols. Goodbye. Jane, did you hear? Oh, Irma. Congratulations, Irma. Glory be. Oh, isn't it wonderful? And all you people thought I had no talent. Oh, honey, I can't wait till the paper boy gets here so we can see the ad. Oh, I can't get over it. I'm a famous author. Now, let me see. How do authors spend their money? First, I'll buy a mansion in France. You know, a chapeau. <laughs> Yeah, and you could buy one of those stunning Parisian gowns. You know, a crepe Suzette. <laughs> oh, maybe that's a paper boy. Come in. Hiya, Jim. Oh, Al, wait till you hear the news. Yeah, what? Well, uh, Professor Nichols is sending me $100 for my life story. Well, ain't that great? Always thought well of this author racket. Friend of mine does terrific, writing numbers. <laughs> is that today's paper, Al? Uh -huh. Well, let me see it. Yeah, and I said page 12. Wait a minute. Look, look. Wait. Oh, here it is. Professor Nichols Authors Institute. Oh, look, everybody. Look, they quote the beginning of my book. Oh. I live in New York City with Jane and the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly. People I think the world. Irma, read the big printing underneath. I used to write this way before I took Professor Nichols' writing course. Oh! Irma and Jane will be back in a moment, and you'll hear that surprise offer we've been talking about. But first... Can't anything be done about triple O? Yes, here's amazing news about a scientific odor test. Eight out of ten men and women stopped or definitely reduced triple O. Stopped odor of body, stopped odor of breath.
stopped offending. Executives, secretaries, clerks, even factory workers at 110 degrees heat took Ems chlorophyll tablets. Results from thousands of examinations were astounding. Working inside the body where odors begin, ENS actually prevented unpleasing odors from forming, stopped odors of body, odors of breath, offensive odors of any kind, stopped all three. Yes, there's scientific proof that ENS really stopped triple O. Keep you fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. You get more complete, more lasting protection against triple O than from any old-fashioned body deodorant, toothpaste, soap, mouthwash, and ends are so easy to use. Safe. Safe as any green vegetable, pleasant tasting. Ends contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. So beware of cheap chewing gum or candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that fail to state their chlorophyll content on the label. Insist on ENDS chlorophyll tablets. That's ENDS, E-N-N-D-S. Trial size only 49 cents, larger sizes even more economical. Stop triple O with ENDS. To those gentlemen who award the Nobel Prize, will you please scratch out Irma Peterson's name? She ain't running. In fact, she's given up all thought of publishing her memoirs at present. What made you decide that, Irma? Oh, I don't think I've had enough experience yet. Oh, I see. Lincoln and Henry Ford and Roosevelt all had their biographies published after they were dead. Maybe I'll write better by then. (laughs) Oh, didn't she, brilliant? Well, how would you like to have your friend Irma work for you for one day in your office? Yes, this is a serious offer. For the highest amount bid, Irma Peterson will come to your hometown, be it north, south, east, or west, and work for you for a full day. And the full amount which you paid for her services will go directly to the March of Dimes Fund for the fight against the dread disease, infantile paralysis. That's right. My friend Irma, in person, will be secretary to the man or woman in the United States who sends in the highest bid for her services. So don't hesitate. Write or wire in to my friend Irma, CBS Hollywood. And who knows, you may have the pleasure of being able to tell your grandchildren, I had my friend Irma as my secretary. And you'll have the greater pleasure of being able to tell them that the money you paid went to the March of Dimes. Irma, I just think it's wonderful of you to make this offer. But what if you have to go far, far away? Say, even to, uh, Illinois. I'll go. All I've got to do is learn the language the people in Illinois speak. (laughs) (laughs) You know, folks... I want to join in asking you to make the highest bids possible because when you do, you'll be making an awful lot of people happy, not to mention me and my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Park Levy, who writes the script with Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. And Alan Reed as Mr. Clyde. Music was under the direction of Lud Ruskin. You can't have a sparkling personality if you don't have sparkling eyes. And you can't have sparkling eyes if they're tired, dull, red from lack of sleep, driving, wind, or glare. So get eye gene. One or two drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling. Leave eyes refreshed. Then your whole face lights up. Eyegene is like a prescription. Contains Lexitol, a tonic for your eyes. Safe, gentle. Eyegene, E-Y-E-G-E-N-E, at drug counters everywhere. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger size is even more economical. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you My Friend Irma. Carl Caruso speaking. Stay tuned for our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. My friend Earl was transcribed of the CBS radio network. <laughs>